Okay, folks, in this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at a term called orthographic projection. And what it essentially means is that there are rules to how an object is shown on a blueprint. There are rules to how it's supposed to look. There are rules to how it is supposed to align itself with other views. And so in this lesson, we're going to have a little bit of a throwback. What we're actually going to have you do is put the computer aside and start working on pencil and paper. Now, just to be straight up, you do not have to get out a ruler and a straight edge, and you do not have to get out graph paper to do the exercises we're going to have in this lesson. You know, we're going to eventually switch you back to a computer which takes care of that for you. What we're after right now is just the concept. Do you understand the difference between a top view, a front view, and a right side view? Where they should go, in essence. Do you understand how they should align with each other? Do you understand or have the ability to take an object in your hand and visualize how that should be shown on a blueprint? That's what we're going here for this. So, you're going to be going through these exercises, and it's going to have you do this or do that, and you are required to do them, both in the lecture and the actual problems. So don't skip over that, because you're going to have to do it as part of your assignment. But, also when you're going through it, don't just go through it just to follow along and just do it. Make sure you're taking the time to actually absorb and capture what you're doing in this process. That you are pay, taking the time to understand this top, front, right side view, left side view, bottom, and that way, because it's a, it's a trick you have to have in the field. In the design world, engineers have to be able to communicate their ideas visually. And so, yeah, we might do like a sketch on a piece of, uh, you know, on, a, as they say, a cocktail napkin or a brown paper bag, and they'll draw things out, but you still have to be able to follow the same rules of orthographic rejection so that someone you're showing it to can understand what you're trying to communicate. And you don't always have the time to sit down with a computer and do all this detailing and do it right. You've got to do it with a good old-fashioned pencil and paper. So go through this lesson with the understanding that this particular skill is not only help you do better blueprints, but it's also going to help you do better drawings and communication with your coworkers, your collaborators, your industrial manufacturers who will be making what you need to do and how you can connect with them and help them understand changes that need to occur. You know, a lot of innovation typically comes first in sketch form and you communicate it long before you switch over to the computer and have it do it. All right? So, don't rush through. Take your time. Pay attention to the videos. When it says pause the video and do this now, definitely do that. Go over it two or three times if need be. You want to make sure you have this skill before proceeding on, or at least the basics for this skill before proceeding on. Thanks for watching. Good luck. And uh, just remember, this, is, this will actually be a remover of stress for you because sometimes when you can't communicate, with collaborators and folks that you're working with on the team and you can't get them to understand what you're trying to describe, an orthographic sketch on a piece of scratch paper usually saves a ton of time. It's also something we use in the field a lot. So it's how we can actually sketch something out on paper, take a picture of an email, email to them or text it to them and get the job back on track quickly. So it is imperative skill and will definitely pay off for your overtime. So anyway, again, thanks for watching and we'll see you.